Astrophysical News that just came out. Okay. Um, well, so, this is, so, know, so, so this is the morning report. Thank, yeah. <laughs> thank Wait, you. Wait, do you guys uh, actually get a morning briefing? Yeah, basically. There, there is yeah. something called AAS Nova. AAS Nova. The American Nova. Astronomical Society has a service called AAS Nova, which you can just, you know, Google. And it works out that there are scientists and graduate, uh, full-time scientists and graduate students who will take their time out, read interesting new papers, and give interesting summaries. That so is, there, there is a morning. So it's report. a morning digest, basically. Kind of. That's yeah. tremendous. Yeah. So, so basically, we have a beautiful community. You really I mean, do. No, no, I, 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 I yeah. mean that in all seriousness. I'm, yeah. I'm, no, I'm, da I'm dead serious yeah, yeah. too. I think so, that's really amazing uh, yeah. to have a daily briefing like yeah. that, uh, because basically it's you and the president. And, and that's it. <laughs> Those are the only two that's people it. getting daily briefings. <laughs> so, you know? on AAS Nova or Double AAS Nova, as we will call it too. There was a recent article highlighted, which was very interesting to me, because, Neil, as you know, I do research in galaxies and supermassive black holes that reside in them. Okay, So there is a study that was just recently published of a triple-lobed radio galaxy. Whoa! Okay. Triple paralobe. Okay, let me explain uh, how that Yeah, I was going to say, please. Whoa. Wait, wait. I mean, not for me, yeah. but for our friend here in the front seat. <laughs> I'm sure, you know, of course you know, I know what a triple-lobed <laughs> pararadiation galaxy is. <laughs> Uh, okay, where, but our friend here probably okay. does. Okay. So, so thirty-second explanation: When you have a supermassive black hole in the center of a galaxy, and it's say eating material, right? Okay, what'll happen is it it generates a, a tremendous amount of energy. Sometimes more energy in one second than our sun would in a million years. Okay, that's called an active nucleus, or in some cases a quasar. All right. When this material jets out from the central black hole, it will often interact with material outside the core of the galaxy, creating these huge lobes of glowing radio emission. Okay, So it's common to find a, a, a radio galaxy AGN quasar system that has a single set of lobes. Okay. okay. A pair. It, yeah, a pair mm -hmm. of lobes. It is uncommon to find double lobes, all right. all right? But this might be the very first triple lobe system that's been found. And what that means is that this particular supermassive black hole system did its thing for some period of time, maybe 100 million years, okay. okay? Spit out these big lobes and then stopped. And after some period of time of quiescence where there was nothing going on, like maybe it was digesting or mm -hmm. maybe there was nothing to eat at that moment, right. suddenly a second burst of consumption happened. Right. And new lobes were formed oh. at a different angle and a different orientation. Wow. And then that stopped. Right. And then now a third, third lobe for the third right. mm -hmm. So what, maybe a more accurate name would be um, the bulimic <laughs> black hole. Bulimic galaxy. The bulimic galaxy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I like this. Because it's just belching yeah. out stuff that it ate. And by the way, we are not immune to that kind of nomenclature. That's right. So, for example, there are dwarf galaxies that have been consumed by the larger galaxy around which they had previously safely orbited. Right. All right. And we call that galactic cannibalism. That's right. Oh. That's the actual name That's of it. That's the actual name okay? of it. Galactic cannibalism. Not yes. only that, you have merging galaxies. Right. And... Uh, Interact. One galaxy, galaxy sort of acquires all the mass of the other. So that's mergers and acquisitions. That's mergers right? and acquisitions. In the universe. In, yeah. in the yeah, universe. That's mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. So now, what's the difference between a merging galaxy and a galaxy colliding? When a galaxy collides, it may or may not merge. A typical collision of a galaxy takes around 100 million years to happen. Mm -hmm. And then, depending on how fast. Just right. So we do that on a computer, and then you just watch it. Right. You know, 100 million years goes by in yeah. 10 uh, seconds. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I figured yeah. there wasn't an actual real time <laughs> observation. <laughs> I just had to be clear. No, I'm glad. I'm glad. I appreciate that. So, depending on how fast they hit each other, right. All right, they will either sort of go out and not quite get there and then come back in the merch. All right. Okay. Or they'll just zip on by. Yeah. Okay. So the speed threshold of two typical galaxies, say two galaxies the size of the Milky Way, okay. is about a million miles an hour. If huh. you're going faster than a million miles an hour relative to one another, you're not likely to merge. Right. But if you're less, if you're like the half million or a quarter million miles an hour relative to one another, what will happen is that they'll pass through and then come together. That overall merging process takes about a billion years, 10 times longer than the actual collision process. Okay. So you wind up with this big, huge dance. It looks right. like a, a cosmic traffic accident. In fact, in, in the old days, 
this predates Charles. Because <laughs> Charles came long after I came on the scene. Uh. Charles is a puppy in this. Um, in the old days, we had catalogs of, of beautiful spiral galaxies, right. beautiful elliptical galaxies, okay. and then this other category of galaxies that were just simply disturbed. <laughs> okay? <laughs> and so, and no one knew how, why, why are these disturbed? 